Hey everybody, today we're doing our top 10 interfaces in Logic. We're talking about how things look and not how they sound. Logic has a long history of making some of the most epic looking instruments, effects, and overall interface things. Let's start with the ES1. This is number 10. And this particular instrument brings me right back to college because this was one of the very first digital software since I used when I was in college 20 years ago. So more than 20. This thing has been around for a long time. It still sounds fine, but man, look at this interface. The colors, the weird recessed areas. I mean, this thing is a piece of work. It's uh, still useful. Still has a place in our workflow, but man, this thing is certainly worth looking at in terms of how ugly it is. Number nine, the ES2, the successor to the ES1, still has all of these such interesting shapes that make it look recessed. This middle section rotates when you switch the filter type. These little barn doors open and close. I mean, we're talking about a lot of animation on something that may or may not actually be worth what you need to do. Here, let's do this. Let's turn them on and off. Those little doors open and close. Here's the filter. So here we go with that. And there we go. So you can actually move the whole thing. This matrix right in the middle, this is something that we've had in a number of different instruments from this era of logic. And it just is, I mean, sure, it gives you all the information, but everything has to have these little different shades. It can be hard to read. You have to always remember that that little green arrow is a piece of information, not just pointing it, but you have to slide it to say how much. Very efficient in some ways, outdated for sure. But this particular piece of logic, I think there's so many ways to improve that strip and what we do with it. Number eight. The Evoc 20 Polysynth. This is actually a really great instrument which combines vocoding with filtering and a synthesizer. Just over in this one area alone, there's so much information. You can set up an entire synth engine right here, but it's hard to use, it's hard to keep track of, it's hard to be efficient. And so I think that this instrument, just as so many other software packages have done like Reason, uh, they need to update how this whole thing works. So that way you can be more efficient and you can actually get a lot more of what you want from it. You can actually get the sounds you're desiring without having to be like a rocket scientist. Overall, we're not gonna look at any more of the instruments like this. We have a few others that are effects. We're not gonna explore them too much. Just know that we can't wait for this aesthetic to go away. We don't need it. It's just, there's so much wrong with how this is designed for a modern workflow. Okay. Number seven is one more from that era, and that is Sculpture. One of my favorite synths in all of Logic, and yet in dire need of an entire makeover. This whole bottom section with the modulation engine and the morph pad, uh, that is just so complicated and could be made so much easier. Like, think of alchemy, which we're gonna look at later. Now, this whole section here, I get it, this little one, knob you move it around and change your material for everything but it's just not a very good design in terms of efficiency and in terms of being able to use this creatively in an effective way i like this section i don't know how else i would do that i mean maybe some different graphics but each of these sound sources control this one string and every time you play that string it moves and it changes, it's attached into the center section, and then all of this other stuff goes out the other side. So it's laid out right. It's just, I mean, if you look down, it's low contrast, everything's dark, except for a couple of little things, but it's really hard to look at if it's small. You almost have to have an entire monitor just for this one plugin. Okay, let's move on to number six. Now with number six, we're moving into effects. This is something which is also part of the B3 emulation as an instrument, but you can use it as, as a standalone Leslie, this rotor cabinet. So you can see there's an animation moving all the time. It does change speed when you do different settings, 
but I love bringing in the photorealism of this. I love having this here so you can see exactly what they're intending with the mic choices, the mic placement, uh, the speed of things. This, even though the interface is a little dark, the wood mimicking the ham and itself, uh, and having the knobs and stuff do that, there would be some benefit to making this a little bit easier to read. Uh, the words, for instance, sometimes can be a little difficult. They all look exactly the same. So you have to be really careful what you're doing. The contrast isn't great, but I love the actual photorealism of the piece of it there. The ring shifter, one of the most confusing effects in all of music technology, probably. Some complex math to create what it does in terms of the input signal and how you can morph it. I'm not gonna explain how this works right now, but I love this interface. This interface has like old school buttons and this huge knob right in the middle that feels like you could just reach onto the screen and touch it. This for me is an example of an interface which is both interesting, uh, doesn't detract from using it, although you need to know what you're doing to use it. The only complaint I have is down here, once again, they want to go with this like dark color scheme and the whole thing then becomes harder to use. The contrast that we have up on these knobs and that knob and those buttons, I think that's a really great example. This overall aesthetic, I love. I, sometimes we want to go too far the other direction uh, and we want to simplify in everything and I think sometimes there's room for this type of creative, uh, real type knobs and things in here. Number four, the vintage EQs. I'm gonna put all three of these together because they're all kind of the same thing. They came out together. We have the Poltec emulation, API emulation, and the Neve emulation. If you've used the actual hardware, you're gonna recognize the knobs on each of these and the, and the sliders on that, even that. These have that feel. And I love how sometimes we can take something that's vintage, something that's analog that we don't have access to easily, do a digital model of it, and all of a sudden bring that feel in graphically so that we can have that little bit of uh, flavor, not just how it sounds, which these sound great, but how it looks. And so I like that we have that. They're easy to look at. These original designers had it right. The dark face plates, the white contrast, you could easily see where you were. Um, more so, you're not gonna get this sense in logic, but you could tell so much by grabbing that knob. It had a, a different shape, so you always knew exactly where it was just by putting your hand on it and turning it. You wouldn't have to always look, you could just reach and know instinctively where things were. I love these interfaces. Number three is Chromaverb. Chromaverb may be a little controversial. I think that there are some things that people like about it and they don't like about it. I like how it sounds. If you know how to use reverb, you're gonna make it sound great. Uh, but I really like the interface. And this middle section here, when you put sound through it, it lights up and it can tell you a lot of information about the sound. Let me show you. So you can see the low frequency that was there at the beginning and some of the sounds that are dying out over time. Uh, this isn't like an analysis of the original sound. It's still just the reverb, but it's gonna tell you what's happening with the reverb in a way that most reverbs don't tell you. So you get a really great picture. The colors, a little hokey. I wish I could change those uh, to make them maybe perhaps more useful. Um, I just wanna be able to customize it. I just want to be able to do more than what it offers me. For number two, the drums. Now we have two wildly different ones right on the screen. We have our drum synth, which I love. It has a great contrast. I can look at this, not only tell immediately what instrument I'm using, but the settings that are there because of the way they're using the really fluorescent colors here. Uh, it also switches depending on what drum you're using, which is nice. And then of course, the drum kit designer, which is also used in the drummer track. I wish it did more in terms of animations when you're using them, but uh, perhaps that is something that's unnecessary. I just really like it. The other drum thing that we have would be the drum machine designer, which has a whole grid, but it has this in there and it has samples in there. 
Um, and I think that we just have a lot of really great percussion stuff that brings stuff as you're using it. So I can look at this and tell what kit I'm using, and that's actually relatively accurate. Just the same way I can look at this and tell what's going on. Honorable mention, this is Alchemy. We're not putting it on the actual list, uh, partially because, well, this interface is nice and it's very informative, it's clean, it gets a lot of information to you at one time. I can see everything to a certain degree that's being modulated on the front of this, plus everything changes depending on what you've clicked on. You have a really cool performance thing. Effects has one of the best browsers for samples in Logic. In fact, they should really take what this has as a browser and use it for all of Logic. It'd be a step in the right direction. Um, but, Overall, it's still just alchemy. I mean, we have a lot of uh, uh, things that are looking like this now. We have all of the, the fat effects and the step effects and uh, a bunch of other instruments that are in here. In addition to this, as kind of a, a, a mention, uh, honorable mention, I would say that something like the retro synth is cool and should probably be on this list, but it's not. Um, I would say that there are some other things that are out there which could have gone on this list, but um, I think I'm getting a good representation of the interfaces and the cool stuff that we have here. Let's move on to number one because it's my favorite. Number one, our guitar tools. Our amp designer, which I think is really cool, and while it's not perfect and there's some other third-party things which people talk about being better, I've had great results with this. I think that it's really nice to be able to have access to a lot of tools. Uh, a lot of different heads and speaker sets and we actually have a whole point here we can change microphones and microphone placement and then tied in with that the pedal board the pedal board just gives me all of that aesthetic that i'm looking for when designing some of these sounds you can do things like splitters like you would on an actual board i mean you take off the the pedals and the bottom looks like what you expected they really did a lot with this i think it's time for an update in terms of this, it's been around for a long time in the same kind of way, but um, both of these I think are a perfect example of when you're working in the studio and someone says, hey, what do you got for guitars? And you pull this up, and I've never been in a room where someone doesn't go, oh, I'm interested to see how that works. I wanna know how that sounds. And so it's really interesting, and I think that this is something that's really cool part of Logic. Is it really number one? I don't know. I think I really like it. I think that um, it brings a lot of what I'm looking for with these tools. What would be your number one? Make sure you share that below. I'm curious to see. I wanna know exactly what you think. What would be your top 10 list from worst to best? Okay, that's it.